Hi, I'm OZ Hull. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. This video looks in detail at the features of the Behringer Swords Dual Filter Module. Swords began to ship in January 2025. This module is based on the open source Blades module by Mutable Instruments. Swords contains two state variable filters. Most parameters are voltage controllable. Examples of these controls include cutoff frequency, resonance, mode, low pass, band pass, high pass, drive, and routing, serial or parallel. Note that there is also a manual wave folder control for each filter. Note that the drive and the wave folder interact in a complex way. I'll provide more details below. Let's look at these controls in more detail. We'll start by looking at the first filter. Later we'll discuss how the two filters interact. The Swords filters are fully analog and based on the 2064 Quad VCA chips. Let's look at the controls for each filter. Each state variable filter has a response which varies continuously from low pass to band pass to high pass. The response is set with the mode control knob. As mentioned, this parameter is also voltage controlled. The low pass and high pass slopes are 12 dB per octave. With the mode knob in the noon position, the low pass and high pass responses combine to create a 6 dB per octave band pass response. The sword state variable filters are capable of self oscillation at high resonance settings. The resulting sine wave can then be processed by the second filter. This processing includes drive, wave folding, and filtering. If the resonance is set just below the oscillation level, the filters are capable of creating a pinging sound with a decay that increases with the resonance level. The cutoff frequency is controlled manually by the frequency knob. There is also a CV input for frequency modulation. It is routed through an attenuverter. Finally, there is a 1 volt per octave input for accurate tracking of the filter. The overdrive response is continuously adjustable between soft clip and two stage wave folding. The following diagram shows the interaction between the drive control and the wave folder knob. We'll take a minute to study this. The diagram comes from the Mutable Instruments Blades Manual. You can find a link in the description. At this point, let's look at the controls which manage how the two filters work together. First, there are two inputs and three outputs. There's a main output, as well as outputs for filters one and two. This allows for a stereo configuration, as well as operation as two independent filters. These inputs and outputs, in combination with the routing knob and the CV, provide remarkable flexibility in the signal flow. The Mutable Instruments Manual describes this routing as, quote, continuously variable and CV controlled, routing from single to parallel to series. It also notes that, with a signal patched into Filter 2's audio input, the routing knob and CV act as a crossfader. Next we'll look at some examples of sounds that we can put together with this remarkable flexibility. Before we go any farther, I wanted to review the patch that we've got here. We have basically got this patched as a voice because we've got the first filter in full resonance mode and it's generating a sine wave and we're driving it from the sequencer that's been quantized so it tracks very well and we're taking the main output the only other thing that we're doing is modulating the drive and we've got the wave folding all the way up 
we increase the drive. The wave folding becomes much more prominent. We're also high pass filtering this. The mode is set to high pass. And so that's the voice that we have set up right now. So there's one more common control that I want to cover, and that is the shift button. When you have the shift button enabled, of course you get the LED to indicate that it's on, and this frequency control knob will control the center frequency of both filters. So what does this knob do? It's going to add an offset, either plus or minus, to the second filter. So let's get a um, high resonance. And then we'll moderate that and get a high resonance to the second filter. see that when you get a large amount of resonance you can get some vocal form that's going on there. And let's just enjoy that for a minute with a variety of sequences. Let me make some quick comments on the voice that we just used. We're using the sawtooth output going into input number one. Our output is coming from the main output. We have both filters as bandpass filters and we have the routing fully clockwise. Let me read what it says from the quick start guide about the routing. If only filter one has an output patch to it, then turning the control counterclockwise will just output the filter one to the main output. At 12 o'clock, the filter one input is sent to both filters and they appear equally at the main output. Fully clockwise, filter one's output is fed to filter two with only filter 2's output appearing at the main output. We're going to change filter 1 to a high pass filter. We're going to keep the series routing so that input goes through filter 1 into filter 2 and then filter 2's output goes to the main output. So high pass, serial, and low pass on the top. So we're scooping up the lows and trimming down the highs to create a band pass. We're in shift mode and we've got the second frequency at high noon so the cutoff should be the same. Let's listen. And there we have our two filters high pass and low pass coupled together and we can change the bandwidth with this right frequency knob. Now let's add some resonance. And now let's separate those cutoff frequencies. close out this section on the variable bandwidth bandpass filter, we're going to take two control voltages out of the sequencer. We're going to route the first one into volt per octave for the first filter, which of course will also feed to the second filter. And we're going to take the second CV and route it into our bandwidth control. 
Let's take a listen. And we'll add this LFO in. Normally, in a resonant filter circuit, as you raise the resonance, you lose low-end spectrum in the sound. The resonance in the swords filters is bass compensated, which means that as you raise the resonance, you don't lose much, if any, of the low-end spectrum in the sound. So let's listen. I mentioned earlier that the swords filters were pingable. Here's what I mean by that. And what we've done is taken a very short pulse out of this envelope and routed it into the input of the filter. We are taking the volt per octave from the sequencer to control the pitch and we're taking the output from the second filter and then we're modifying the resonance to adjust the decay of the sound. Here's a demonstration of the fact that we can use the swords as a cross fader. First, let's listen to the first channel, which is self resonating. We've got our routing turned all the way counterclockwise. And as we turn the routing fully clockwise, we've got this triangle that's going into the second input. We're doing some manipulations, including uh, the drive slash wave folding. So we've got quite a complex signal. So let's put this in the middle so that we can hear both of them. And then let's add a little slow modulation. Please take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. In this video, we've reviewed all of the controls on the Swords module. There's still so many things to explore, particularly using audio level modulation in some of the inputs like routing and mode. There are one or two things that are a little difficult about using this module. The most prominent of these is the tuning. When using a filter as a sine wave oscillator, it is possible to tune it, but it is difficult. It would help to use an external 1 10th volt DC signal into the FM input for a fine tune. In fact, it would be a good idea to include a small precision voltage as a default signal in the FM input. There's a lot to like about this module. It's more than a filter. It's more than two filters. It can be a crossfader. It can be a chorus-like effect. It can be an entire voice. It can be a dramatic spectrum shaper of any audio content. This shaping goes well beyond the normal resonant low pass filter. It can be a wave filter. It can be a dual formant filter. It can be an FM modulation source or destination. For me, the most unusual aspect of the Swords module is the amazing animation of the harmonics. I love the wave folder. I love the harmonic magic when modulating mode between low pass, band pass, and high pass. That's what you're hearing right now. In this regard, it reminds me of the amazing filter on the OB6 from Sequential. If you think you might want one of these modules for your Eurorack rig, I would highly recommend it. Certainly the price is right. Thanks for watching.